Hello everybody, and thank you for joining me for some more Mechanical Misadventures. Today, we are going to be winterizing this Yanmar L100 clone. This is a Chinese clone of the very popular Yanmar L100, but this should work with just about any motor that's like this or similar air-cooled diesels, be it the, you know, 10 horse, 7 horse, or 4.5 horse. This should help you along your way. Now this motor has been working pretty good as a lawnmower throughout the summer. Starts on the, maybe the third pull, but now it's getting cold. And as these diesels get cold, they start to have some little bit of trouble. So I'm gonna go through a little bit of what these issues are and how we can help to mitigate them. So we got two main issues that make these motors or just any diesel tough to start in the winter. And the diesel folks know this, so forgive me for starting at the basics, but a diesel engine is compression ignition, not spark ignition like most cars or other small engines. It's compression ignition. So the actual pressure of the piston is what fires it off. That along with heat. Heat from the engine adds more energy into the system that allows that compression ignition to happen. Well, sometimes the engine isn't making any heat, like right now. We're at a little bit of a disadvantage right there. You gotta pull a little bit harder on that pull start to make it work. Another issue is the fuel. Again, the diesel folks know this, but diesel gels at a much higher temperature than gasoline. So you, you don't even need to worry about freezing because once it's turned to gel, it's basically like molasses and then the motor isn't gonna be able to draw it up and use it. So those are our two major issues that these diesel engines have. It is the cylinder or engine temperature and the fuel gelling and all the tips and tricks I'm going to show you today are going to be to combat those one way or the other and we're going to go in escalating order from cheapest and easiest to most difficult and let's get started all right so the first tip is the easiest and we've already done it it's just to bring it inside and you know you could bring it inside and even if your area isn't heated you're just putting in a shed or even under a tarp you're getting rid of that crucial little bit of just wind chill that makes the motor, the fuel, all that stuff that much colder. Also, if you are having problems for whatever reason and you're in a shed, you're in a workshop, you're just that much more comfortable. So next tip is to use diesel 911 or some equivalent. Again, the diesel folks know this. What this says it does, it restores flow of fuel to engine caused by gelled or frozen fuel filters. And that's a lot of words. Basically what it does is it changes the properties of the diesel and it decreases the gel temperature. So with this, your fuel won't gel until a much lower temperature. And this is important down here. It says treats up to a hundred gallons with this full bottle. Now this maybe takes one or two gallons. So just a splash should do you a little splash. And that's about all you need for a tank this size. Well, I hope you enjoyed the easy stuff because that's all the easy and cheap stuff. Now we're gonna move on to things that are a little bit more involved. We're gonna be starting with the glow plug. Like I said earlier, these diesel engines, they are fired from compression and heat. So how do they normally make heat? Well, they'll usually use, if you've got a diesel car or something like that, they'll have a glow plug. Now, a glow plug doesn't work like a spark plug. In fact, this is just a heater element. What you usually have in your average diesel vehicle is this glow plug will stick in the cylinder and it'll be right next to where the injector pokes in. This is our injector right here. And your goal is to heat up the area around the point of combustion as much as possible. So we're gonna add a glow plug. Another method you can do is what's called a heater grid. And rather than heat up the area around the point of injection, what that's trying to do is heat up the air coming in. So it'll look kind of like a toaster. It'll be sitting on the intake and it'll heat up the air coming in. That'll also help to increase the cylinder temperature when it's firing up. Usually glow plugs are the bare minimum and the heater grids are a nice little extra. And I say that because we're gonna be using this glow plug kind of like a heater grid. So like I said, the goal is to put this glow plug as close to the point of combustion as possible. And this, this old Yanmar, it doesn't really have a place for a glow plug. It never had one. 
and I'm not really brave enough to start just drilling into this cylinder head to stick a glow plug. There's, there's no way I can do that without messing something up. So we're gonna put it there. We got a nice flat spot right here and we'll be able to stick the glow plug in right there. Now at that point, it's gonna be acting closer to a heater grid than a glow plug, but like I said, you want to be as close to the point of combustion as you can and hey, that's as close as I can get confidently. All right, let's fish this bad boy off. Let's take this wing nut off. I should mention that some of these Yanmars, like the L70s, did come with a heater grid. And I figured that putting one of those on would be the easiest course of action for me. But I was not able to find a part number or any reliable information. In fact, I, I, heard, I heard somewhere that the L70 heater grid will not work on these L100s and clones. But again, that was only one post, so we'll see. All right, now we just gotta get some tens and fish this off. Another reason I wanna do this manifold is that these Yanmar manifolds actually come off. So rather than drilling into the cylinder head and getting all kinds of you know garbage in the flow path or down in the cylinder even, um, you can just mess around with this manifold and then clean it up and plop it right back on. Whether you wanna do a heater grid one or two or three however many you want glow plugs shouldn't be any problem you can just do that and mess with this and once it's clean go on no problem there we have it easy as pie now all there is to do is drill a hole this um, glow plug is a M12 by 1.25 so we need a 10.2 millimeter drill or 13 30 seconds drill and so thereabouts is where we're gonna stick it let's just get our little tapper and tap it that should give us a good starting point and then I'm gonna go and start with a way too big drill and see if we can't go for it. You're kidding me. Every time. That's some soft Chineseium. Like I said, this is an M12 by 1.25. So let's get to going. That is pretty wobbly, but it is the right thread. So I'm just going to put like a little bit of Teflon tape on it and then it should probably be good. Look at that. That pokes way in there. That's very nice. Well, there we go. I think that's pretty elegant. Uh, you don't need a very complicated electronic system to run this thing, but I'll show you how to do it anyway. But I think that looks pretty good. I think that'll get this area nice and hot. Obviously not as good as either a heater grid or a glow plug, but you know, I'm about 15 minutes into the project and you know, it's pretty elegant, I think. Like I said, too, if you wanted to, we got another flat spot. You could stick another one if you're somewhere where it's really cold. You might even be able to do two next to each other. But I think this is all I need for my area, considering it's going to live indoors. And let's continue on. So there we go. There is our filter and everything installed. There is our glow plug. As you can see, we didn't get too far away from the injector, that little two-bolt thing right there. And I think this is going to make quite a difference. Now, if you don't want to install a complicated electrical system, you could just take a battery, stick the ground onto the engine, and flash the glow plug with just like an alligator clip or anything like that. But we're going to do a little bit more electronics work. And here we go for our next mod. I would strongly advise adding a starter. If you want to make things easier on yourself physically, ooh, there we go. Um, I didn't consider this an easier mod because, well, it's two bolts. One, two but these starters are also rather expensive. And you could probably read that part number right off the side, but that starter's not doing us a fat lot of good because we do not have an electrical system. So why don't I show you what we're gonna do to take care of that, how we can fire up our starter and our glow plug. All right, here is our wiring setup. Um, don't be fooled by this big mess. It's actually deceptively simple. This is a two relay fuse box that I got off 
Amazon. I'll put a link for it in this description. And right now we're just using the relays. So this yellow wire up here, whoop, that goes over to the glow plug and this other yellow wire goes down into the starter. We have a thick red wire over there and that goes directly to the starter. And then we have these two wires here, right now hooked straight up to a battery, but that would be ignition. And you don't have to worry about all that blue stuff. Those are all just fused wires for different accessories. I will add accessories eventually, but not now. We have a ground hooked directly to the body. And like I said, we got the two over there. Let's test if this bugger works. Now I took out the filter assembly just so you could be able to see this. In there we got the glow plug. It's a little bit hard to see. Here is our ground. This would be hooked up to a switch normally, but we could just ground it out right here on the body. Click, there goes our relay. Oh, look at that. There is our glow plug working. And if you really reef on it or hold this on, that will, um, that whole thing will turn bright red, just like that, or bright orange. But I'm pretty happy with that. In case you can't tell, that's quite warm. That's gonna make firing this thing up just that much easier. Okay, next, let's give the starter a little click over. It's basically the same thing, but we're using a different signal wire. And I don't want this thing to start or anything, so if it just starts to turn over, I'm gonna be happy. I'm gonna say that's a success. The fuel is turned off, and it is in the shutoff position on the injection pump. Just if it spins over at all, I'm gonna be happy. And there we go. Looks like we got success. So it looks like our electrical system is a success. We got starter, we got glow plug, we got the thing indoors, and we got the diesel 911 in there. So that's about everything I have. In case you can't tell, this thing's attached to a tractor, which is attached to a snowblower. And I would show you how to wire this a little bit nicer, but you know, this is a pretty unique machine. You're probably doing it on something else. So that should be everything you need to know to winterize your Yanmar or Yanmar clone, be it an L100 or whatever else there is. I hope this was informative, and thank you very much for watching. Have a good one. Shoots!